Hi, Michael Tellinger here, and it gives me great pleasure to introduce um, the One Small Town supporters and followers to our amazing One Small Town ambassador for the country of Lebanon, Fayez Mukarim. Hello, Fayez. Great to see you, brother. How are you, Michael? I hope you're doing well. Yeah, doing excellent. And, um, you know, One Small Town South Africa is a monster, and um, we, li we literally are going through a gauntlet of baptism by fire, learning all the hard lessons that are going to make us stronger and better in future. And every time I look at you and Russell Mutton and the beautiful small town that you've got there, I get jealous of you because uh, you, are, you are experiencing the opposite side of what we're experiencing here, how to take a small town of, you know, eight to 10,000 people and turn that into one small town success. So tell us uh, some of the highlights of what you're up to at the moment. First of all, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to live this amazing dream. We're literally creating history. This is an alternative reality that we were never thought of. And Ras al Matin is truly a beautiful place to be in. Um, as you know, our journey started over a year ago with the mayor and with a couple of the community uh, leaders and people. But now it's gotten to a, a level where there are, I would say, easily over a thousand people participating. Uh, we have broken it down into uh, council groups where you have your uh, youth, you have your women, and you have your men. You also have the leadership role of the youth, of the women, of the men. We're from that group of anywhere between 50 to 100. We've selected uh, between 11 and 14 to represent those groups. Uh, we also have the task team, which is a little bit over 25 people representing all the different departments. And uh, you obviously have all sorts of uh, people trying to volunteer into what we're doing and uh, make this uh, dream become a reality. So Fayez, just for those that don't know Lebanon, um, first of all, yeah, Lebanon is an ancient historic country. It is one of the most beautiful countries on, on the Mediterranean there. Um, and, um, and it's got a great history that goes back to the Phoenicians and beyond, way beyond the Phoenicians, obviously. Um, so what I wanted to ask you, just can you describe where Ras El Matin is in context of the country? So for those that don't know, Lebanon sits just, just above Israel, just above Israel. Um, so so, so as a reminder, Lebanon has its history from the Phoenicians onwards. It's a country which has 5 million Lebanese living here and 20 million Lebanese living internationally. The famous Shakira has a Lebanese father. The famous Salma Hayek has a Lebanese father. Um, we're known to be a country of 18 religions, uh, all the way from Orthodox Christianity to Muslims to, to Armenians. Uh, the Lebanese in general are all bilingual and in some cases trilingual. Um, we don't have a desert, nor oil, nor camels. And uh, it's a, a, a beautiful place that you can actually ski and 30 minutes later be on the beach sunbathing. It's such yeah. a small country with a, a diverse population. And for, 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 is on the so, mountains. Sorry, just while you're talking about famous Lebanese people, I think the most famous Lebanese uh, celebrity is, is uh, Keanu Reeves, right? Keanu Reeves, like me, was born in Beirut. Okay, I was even called Keanu before I had the beard with my eyes, especially when speed came out. Yes, he is. And also we have billionaires like Carlos Slim Hello who alone can pay the, the Lebanese debt. He's worth over $50 billion. Uh, nice. So yes, we have a lot of famous Lebanese. And as you know, Lebanon has uh, one of the first universities in the world. It's where Jesus did his first miracle. Uh, it has lots of uh, historical uh, important information. Rasul uh, Hatim is very famous. It's the pine capital of Lebanon, where it has the most amount of pine trees within its, its radius. Ah, that's fantastic. So obviously pine will become one of the one small town exports and uh, and one of the businesses that you're going to focus on uh, among the business plans for Ras El Matin, one small town, right? So be before Michael Tillinger's one small town, the, the, the Ras El Matin citizens were always extracting the pine, the actual pine nuts, and selling them nationally and in some cases internationally. But now that we've, we've been identifying what pine really is, we've managed to understand that there is high benefits in its pine needed uh, tea, in the pine uh, oil extract, things like pine tar, 
So all of a sudden, a $5 million industry has become a $200 million industry with material that was never even understood or identified. And yes, it's one of our top 20 businesses that we will be doing. And this is something that we are starting right now. So um, so just describe us again where Ras El Matan is located. It's, it's on the coast, right? It's basically a 25 minute or 20 minute drive from uh, Beirut, which is uh, the capital uh, of Lebanon. And it's also less than 30 minutes away from the ancient village of Biblos, the city of Biblos, which is the oldest uh, continuously living civilization in the world. They think that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Get dating back? How far? Yeah, 7,000 uh, BC. That's that's incredible. And many of the, the viewers that will watch it, this will be familiar with the city of Byblos, obviously. And it was the, fir the first sale that took place from the Phoenician boat took place from Byblos, which is half an hour away. And is Ras El Matan north or south of, of Beirut? Uh, it is east, east north of Beirut. Okay. Um, so what I want to say is that uh, obviously what people also don't know is that you know, Beirut in, in the 50s and, and so forth, I think was it was referred to as the Paris of the, the Middle East or something like that, right? Um, the Pearl of the Middle East and the Paris of the Middle East. Yes. Right. What I find fascinating about uh, Lebanon, you know, I, I, I grew up in Johannesburg or I studied in Johannesburg at Wits Medical School, uh, University, Wits University Medical School, where I graduated with a pharmacy degree a bachelor of pharmacy degree and we had lots of lebanese kids in my class you know it's so the south africa is full of lebanese and uh, and most of the lebanese people in south africa are very wealthy and very successful uh they are hard working focused so i've always known lebanese people in south africa as successful people and i think that is the case uh, pretty much all around the world where there are a lot of very successful lebanese that I think are going to find the One Small Town Lebanon initiative very exciting and a great opportunity for them to invest in their own country, support specific areas and sectors, whether it's tourism, whether it's health and wellness, whether it's energy, whether it's fine needles or you know, whatever. And, 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 and the wealthy, successful Lebanese around the world, I, think, I believe and trust, based on our discussion as well, are going to play a more and more increasing increasingly important role in the One Small Town Lebanon. What do you feel about that? I think uh, uh, decentralization is the way to go based on uh, how things are going. The Lebanese are tired of sending fish to their family. They wanna be able to send a fishing rod and allow those people who are suffering to stand up on their feet and become independent and self-sustainable. What's amazing about our economic model that I had never seen before in any other model was that it's not only about self-sufficiency and self-sustainability, but about creating a thriving economy where through yeah. co-ownership collaboration, we can actually live in prosperity. I mean, why should Dubai and Las Vegas have 24 hour electricity versus here, everybody's trying to you know, light that candle or, or work with solar. Uh, this is our human right, especially when we understand what this ecosystem is about and how easy it is to work with mother nature and all its incredible benefits starting with what we know as you know, human feces and how amazing as a fertilizer it is with all its nitrogen when you give it oxygen. And when you don't give it oxygen and you put it in an anaerobic digestive, it goes through this natural process, acidosis, hydrolysis, and obviously uh, methadosis where it gives you methane. So we have a lot of uh, uh, learning and understanding of where we are. And uh, your, your company, the technology company, is definitely uh, brings back and honors people like uh, Charles Steinmetz and Nikola Tesla. All right, so let's talk about, we can talk a lot more about the energy technology and the water technology that we have, but we'll cover that in a separate discussion because that, that is such a big subject that will completely hijack this, this conversation. <laughs> and I will make many more videos uh, about our water and energy technology, and especially because we'll be launching our prospectus and our, our energy tokens, the water purification and the water, the, the water tokens and the the energy investment tokens for those that want to join this incredible ride. But let's come back to, to what you've achieved so far in Ras El Matan. Now tell us about this building. You've taken over a building. It is now where the official uh, head office is of uh, One More Time Lebanon uh, and a bunch of other stuff is going on there. T take us through your office and what's happening. 
So we officially have our companies registered, the LLC and the co-op and the nonprofits. We have officially taken over a three-floor building, of which the top floor is going to be the first one small town, Ras al Cafe, where you will have all sorts of souvenirs to do with Ras al and the Ubuntu movement and the one small town uh, community. If you give me permission, I'd love to have something to do with Michael Tillinger also over there. And um, we will also offer services to students like photocopying and printing and Western Union services. You will have this amazing stand of juices and smoothies, everything to do with health and prevention of diseases, um, along with organic, naturally made ice cream. We will also have the breakfast area, the dish of the day area, where the community women will get together and decide on a daily basis who will be cooking for the community. At night, you'll be having all sorts of snacks, like the famous shawarma, burgers, and salad bowls. And mostly, which is the most important thing here, is we're going to have a made in Ras Matin shelf, where only products made in Ras Matin, approved by the One Small Town, that have the One Small Town seal, will be offered over there to our communities and to be sold nationally and internationally through containers. So obviously, the, the, so I, I, I wanted to introduce Sara, who wanted to say a quick Hi. hello, and who's actually uh, running the, the restaurant. We're creating the manual and the menu and hiring the people. And obviously, it will be integrating with the One Small Town app, of which 80% of the staff working there will be uh, uh, accessed from our app. Well, Sarah, lovely to meet you. What a beautiful girl you are, and what a fantastic T-shirt you're wearing. Thank you. Thank you. And nice to meet you also. Lovely to meet you. And I can't wait to go to Lebanon and meet the whole team there. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Sarah. Bye. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the restaurant. And when you go one step down, you have a beautiful office space where you have the secretary, which her job is to obviously do secretary tasks and to inform and to educate. Uh, you're going to go inside. You're going to find a nice TV showing all sorts of interviews from Michael Tillinger and all sorts of activities taking place around the world. Our books, our Ubuntu books, our PDFs, um, subscription and membership uh, process so, to be shown so, there. So is it like an education center, right? Yes, it's, it's like an education center of one small town with the sign up forms and the programs and all that stuff. And then you walk inside, you're gonna find your uh, project manager office the ambassador's office, the asset manager office, and the financial uh, uh, partner office. The project manager is very important. As you know, we're working on 120 projects. Babysitting is a project. Uh, uh, taking care of the elderly are projects. But yes. these aren't going to bring uh, a, a big profit. But these are essential and important for the community. Yeah, Businesses so this is important. Fires, why are you on that? So let me just interject here. It's important for people to realize that the One Small Town Initiative is, is, is about business, setting up many businesses. It's owned by the community. And, and let's just backtrack a little bit. The co-op, you said the company is registered. So one of the companies you, men you, you mentioned there is the co-op or the co-op type business that is owned by the people, owned by the community. So that is the strength within this. And all the businesses that we start with the One Small Town Initiative in Russell Mutton is owned by that co-op and by the people of Russell Mutton. It's not owned by anybody else. They own 60% of that business. The rest of the percentage is open for investors and for the management by the Ubuntu Planet Head Office. And, uh, and, but the rest of it, so, so the rest of it all belongs to, to the community. And if the community or members of the community become investors of their, uh, uh, you know, in their own right into any of those businesses, that means that 90% of the business belongs to that community. And this has never happened before. So no external giant, whether it's a retail store, or whether it's a mine, or whether it's a who knows what kind of business, uh, will be able to come into a small town that is operated on a one small town principle. No large corporation will ever be able to come and abuse the people of small towns by offering them jobs, and then hanging them out to dry when they close down the factory or close down their business. So just important to realize that and and um, now I lost my train of thought where I was going with that, but um, um, but those are, what's important that every every member of the community that belongs to one small town to the co-op has a potential to take their idea and their business and present it to the co-op and say this is the business I'd like to do, 
And because it's going to benefit the community as well as myself, the co-op will find a way to fund that business. And this is where Once More Town head office and our global reach comes in where we will take all these businesses and we will do our very best to find funding, not only for the large businesses, but for the small mom and pop kind of businesses as well. After your interview last night, I literally received more than 40 messages today from people from Ras al saying, I have a business, when can we meet? I have an idea. Uh, just a reminder for the viewers that in Ras al there's honey businesses going on. But now that one small town came along, we've created a business plan where we're gonna go from having 200 beehives to 2,750 beehives. All of a sudden, we're dealing with honey. Now we're dealing with the pollen. We're dealing with the venom. As you know, venom has a big market, market especially for arthritis, okay? We're doing uh, bee therapy where you can actually breathe and, and heal your asthma. We're doing bee tourism where you can come, we'll pick you up from the airport, we'll show you how the whole setup works. We're giving bee certificates where we can educate you on how to have your own beehive. We're gonna have an online bee app, okay? We have a bee retreat where you and your wife can come and have a honeymoon on the weekend, sleeping on top of beehives and resonate to that amazing frequencies and clear out your chakra and uh, uh, uplift your vibration. We are also selling uh, don't, don't, hey, don't, give all our, don't give all our trade secrets away here now, Fayez. <laughs> no, but listen, I love, I love hearing yeah. you often about all these things because, you know, some of the things you mentioned here, like the bee treatment, it's also obviously part of, of the, the Once More Time Health and Wellness Center that we plan to create. And what people don't know, uh, uh, those in the know will know about this, that the frequency of bees, the bees' wings, and the various frequencies that you get from the different stages of bees' activities have very, very strong healing properties. And it's for the very simple reason that, you know, honey never goes off, right? So if honey never goes off, it's never affected no expiry. Or the viruses or bacteria or anything. It never goes off, you know? Honey stays pure for as long as it's around. So somehow the frequencies that are responsible for making the honey are, must be healing frequencies that will deal with infections and fungus and viruses and bacteria and, and often diseases that kill us that we're not even aware of. So it's fantastic to hear you say that you, because of your the ex, extensive bee and honey industry that you're putting together there in Ras Al Matan, it opens it up to bee healing and bee treatment, which becomes a tourism attraction. And this is where One Small Town and the initiative becomes so obviously and shows you how everything is integrated and everything fits into everything else. Everything we do must in some way support one or the other or, me, or several of the other businesses that we launch for our and in our community. So anyway, I, I interrupted you, but carry on. And I'll I just want to end the bee saying that we, we got the results from a lab and it turns out our honey is extremely powerful. It has a 2.7 milliliter spread of bacteria which is one of the strongest. And are actually bees as an army are just as strong as the Russian ones in terms of their immune system. <laughs> and then that takes me, this is Soha. This is the best water in Lebanon and one of the strongest water companies in the world. Where is it located? On our next door village. Literally wow. our next door village, a five minute ride. The famous Soha from the village of Falouha. Okay, now this was owned by an amazing family from the Zuhzri family. And they were working with water for decades until next we came part of the, the Black Rock entity and took over this water. So we luckily got in contact. And this, by the way, happens in the world of Michael Tillinger and Ubuntu and One Small Town, where scientists and geniuses from around the world contact us. A man by the name of Jeremy Christian called us and he told us that he had been working with Pal Power for the last 20 years. Pal Power was the man that came out with uh, uh, primary water and everything that we were not taught about. We were always taught that water and rainwater is all about you know, evaporation, condensation, precipitation. Uh, Pal Power discovered and proved that there's something called primary water, which is water in the Earth's crust. It's the uh, combination of hydrogen and oxygen that, that takes place, and it's structured water and it's vortex water. So when Jeremiah contacted me and said, I would never give these secrets away, but being that you guys want to create this incredible alternative system, and being that he was a follower of Michael Tillinger, he hopped on board and asked me to supply him with something called the topographic map of Ras al By looking at the elevations and the plates, 
we were able to identify water, structured water that exists in Ras al-Matan. So now one of our top 20 businesses is made in Ras al-Matan water, where we will only sell it in glass bottles and export it to Cyprus and Italy and all those intelligent people around the world that understand the benefits of water and how amazing uh, it could be in the healing process. Well, especially, um, you know, especially structured water and healthy water and uh, that becomes sacred water. And we have exactly the same situation in the town of Kuruman, the most, uh, the, the most important spring in all of Southern Africa is out in Kuruman. And I admit it has been neglected very badly. And that's one of our objectives is in the Kuruman one small town is to do exactly the same and preserve that water and turn it into a, uh, a, a, a pilgrimage, a spiritual pilgrimage, you know, to touch the most sacred water of Southern Africa. So I'm so excited to hear about this water in, in Russell Mutton because I have not heard that. You haven't mentioned that to me yet. So you're keeping secrets from me. Um, and, and that's, you know, sometimes it's exciting. Sometimes it's, it can be, uh, it can be a nice surprise. Uh, and uh, so listen, this is fantastic news. Now tell us about the, uh, anything else that's happening. So obviously uh, we're looking at a number of business plans. I think we look yeah, at 14 business plans, but also one of the most important ones is the art gallery. Tell us about how far you've come with the art gallery. Yeah. So, so on the second floor, you, you have the offices, correct? Where everyone will be working together in unity to, to finish the 120 projects of which 20 are going to be the big money makers, like the pharmaceutical company, like the health retreat uh, or the health center, we should call it. Um, now the other uh, part of that floor is a huge space where it's going to be an art gallery where we will have all sorts of arts, make pictures, paintings, artifacts, everything to do with the art sculptures that will be sold on our monthly NFT platform. And as you know, that is something that we have never heard of before, where an artist for the rest of his life will be getting royalty from an art that he sells in our gallery. We have a nice formula where 60% belongs to the artist, 30% belongs to the gallery and 10% to the international office uh, and all that uh, royalties and intellectual properties that they have to spend on. Um, and this will take place one to three days per month. The rest of the days, what we're gonna do with the gallery is provide four free, free art classes, free uh, singing classes, free musical instrument playing classes, and stuff like yoga and meditation for our students and even the adults that would like to join that will be paid and financed uh, part by our gallery income and part by the volunteer work and the app that we uh, will be uh, implementing. Right. So uh, what's important for us to share while we're talking about this with the viewers is that uh, the setting up a one small town art gallery is in a way becoming one of the first things we're aiming at in every one small town initiative. Um, because once you activate the, the, the creative soul and the creative spirit of a community, that community comes to life. And many towns and many small towns around the world right now are decimated, completely destroyed, the artists, the, all, all artists, painters, sculptors, musicians, filmmakers, uh, et, et cetera, poets, et cetera, et cetera. Any kind of artist that lives in any community have been destroyed and decimated. Remember, this is part of the global agenda. If you destroy arts, culture, and sport, you destroy a community because that, that's, and that's what's held communities together for thousands and thousands of years. So the moment we bring this back and we create a center, destination where artists of all kinds can come and express their artistic talents and skills and share it with not only their community, but because of they now one of the one small town artistic community, we can share with the rest of the world. We'll be holding, as Fayez mentioned, monthly auctions and, uh, and, and, and introductions of special and so forth. So this is, for me, I believe, one of the key things that we are doing with the one small town initiative is awakening and and uh, stimulating the heart and soul and the creative spirit of the one small town community that will ripple throughout it will send this energetic wave throughout that whole one small town uh, environment and uh, and activate people in ways that they probably can't imagine so it's very 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 exciting for me being a musician and artist myself that's why i'm so excited about it and i can tell you right now that we have also most likely found the location for our Once More Town Gallery in Kuruman as well. 
uh, we're just waiting to sign that that agreement that we can put it there. Very exciting. I, I just wanted to uh, mention that in Russell Martin we have all sorts of artists, and one that is very famous is Sheikh Nasib Makarem, who actually wrote the national anthem on a piece of rice, and he drew the map of USA in detail on a map on a, a, a grain of rice, literally wow. a grain of rice, and one of those grains which had uh, also uh, the national anthem of France at one point, was sold for $150,000 40 years ago. So you need to understand what sort of art we're dealing with. Uh, we could easily have you know, a modern day Picasso uh, become part of our uh, gallery, and this will be part of our tourist attraction uh, in Russell Matter. Well, I, I really think that what we're doing with this fire is, is we're creating history in the world of art where from now on, why would any artist want to put their art into a gallery where they get paid once off a miserable percentage of the selling price and then never see any benefit from that again? That will never happen uh, to artists uh, again. So um, Thanks to you and your history of being an artist. Well, exactly. You know, because I've been benefiting from royalties as a musician and as an author. But I look at fine artists and sculptors and any other artists they, they, they create a beautiful piece of art and then they die penniless and then the art gets sold for hundreds of millions. You know, uh, Van Gogh is probably the greatest example of, of an artist who, who died penniless. And, and I think his paintings are, have reached the highest prices for works of art. And, and this, is, this can't happen. This should not be happening. That is a crime against humanity, crime against artists. And I believe that the One Small Town Initiative has provided a solution for dilemma and as it provides solutions for pretty much every other area of society that has been um, that has been abused so it brings great joy to my heart that this is making such good progress so we come into one, the, one floor down we come to the end of this of this little interview um and i just want to say is there anything else important that you want to share or bring to light yes remember there's one more flat one more floor at the bottom of the three floor building and that's going to have the monthly baskets of goods produced in Russell Martin that we will be giving out to our uh, co-owners uh, in the one small town. And most importantly, we're going to have our first vertical farming system, which started off as me uh, waiting on Heathrow Airport for my plane. I'm talking to some company called Adventures for an hour. And then it was concluded by an email from the chief financial officer who turned out to be a big fan of Michael Tillinger for the last seven years. And now they've donated more than $250,000 worth of containers for Russell Matin, where we will use intermittent lighting, frequency, no chemicals, no pesticides, in order to grow and take out 1,200 kilos of plants a day. A day. And these well, are for years, this is spinach and watercress. This is unbelievable. I, I wasn't even aware of this. You see, you are keeping secrets from me. <laughs> to be honest, I sent you the voice recording. So that's how busy you are. <laughs> I, I actually got the CFO on, on, on voice recording because it was so important. I didn't want him to, you know, change his mind. His Man, name this is Adam. Is... Meet, and I told him how Adam means the atom, the beginning of the universe. And, is... and that's a very good introduction for us to grow algae. And as our, the viewers should know, algae is a lipid, carbohydrate and protein. You can get diesel out of it to power our generators and our planes and our cars. And most importantly, there's something called the carbon credit around the world where banks and governments like to pay you for growing it because it extracts uh, CO2 out of the air. Well, Faiz, this is fantastic news, man. I didn't know that you, had, that you actually received a donation of all these containers. This, so this is news to me, and this is fantastic. So it just shows you how the One Small Town Initiative, like I mentioned in the video yesterday, there's so much going on. It's impossible to keep updating all the time, every hour, every day with all the news articles and the news items because it's just growing so quickly. So, look, I just want to say, um, for those that don't know you, uh, I'm deeply grateful that you joined the One Small Town uh, Ubuntu community. The fact that you sent me an email to say you want to be an ambassador for Lebanon because we could not have been blessed with a better candidate for the role that you're playing right now. And you're leading by a great example to every other ambassador around the world. For you, for, for people that are not aware, Fayez lives in London. He relocated from London back to his town of birth, to Russell Martin, to take on this initiative and to launch us there. So this guy is truly committed to this 
more beyond anybody's doubt of commitment. So well done, Fayez. I'm deeply grateful to you, and so should all the people of Lebanon be. Thank you very much. Yes. You, you know how, how much I appreciate this, and as I always tell you, I'm willing to, like Mike says, smartly die for this cause. I have my four-year-old daughter in London and my wife, who's a health guru. And obviously, if they were with me here, it would definitely be heaven on earth. And hopefully, once we completely launch the One Small Town, I'll convince them to move here, especially in the Neoplatonic Academies of School that we will be offering and the amazing health centers. On a note today, I have a meeting with a chemotherapist, uh, a genius, who handles everything to do with the cancer world. And my meeting will be introducing other technologies that Roy Reif and Anthony Holland promotes from the electron microscope to shattering frequency technologies. So taking his life on a, to another level. Well, this is fantastic. Fayez, uh, once again, thanks very much for this update and uh, for everyone that's watching this. Remember, don't sit on the fence. Be a seed of consciousness in your own town, in your own country. If you want to be an ambassador for your country, email us, contact at onesmalltown.org. We'll take it from there. And, uh, and if you want to develop business plans for One Small Town, please share those with us, contact us. If you want to engage in any way, go to our website. Everything happens from our website. OneSmallTown.org is the main website that you can access all the information, all the knowledge, all the news uh, articles on a daily and a regular basis. And, uh, and, and go and read, snoop around, watch the videos. Don't sit on the fence, become proactive because if we don't take charge now, we will, we may not see, um, uh, you know, the next 10 years of our lives because the assault on, on human freedoms is getting worse and worse by the day. So thanks for watching here, Fayez. Thank you again. And um, I look forward to catching up with you again in a, in a week or so to hear the progress. Uh, I just want to say on a note, thank you to Michael and for the incredible team that we have around the world in more than 30 countries. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for your hard work, for your energy, and for your time. And a reminder to our viewers, we are the ones that we have been waiting for. Be the change that you would like to see in this earth. Always choose love. Thank you. And remember, the Infinity Token is available on our website and on our trading platform. And uh, the second um, batch of uh, 1 million Infinity Tokens is being launched on the 10th of October. So don't miss out on this. The first million tokens sold out in less than a month. So get out there and get your infinity token. It's going to become the hottest cryptocurrency token in the world very, very soon. Why? Because it represents real human sweat equity, real work, people working together, contributing for the well-being of the entire community. Every token represents three hours of work labor and sweat equity and on that note i'll now finally say goodbye and thanks again for till next time thank you michael united we stand